The theme uh, for, well, the session actually uh, is based, will be based on two themes. Uh, the first being novel approaches to funding research and the second in industry academia interface for research and innovation. I have great pleasure in inviting our first speaker, Professor Ni Nyoman Sri Pushpinsin, Executive Director, Air Langa Global Engagement Universities, Indonesia. Thank you very much uh, for this opportunity. Um, honorable uh, guests, uh, delegate, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is uh, Yoman. Uh, very good morning. I'm. Uh... <laughs> yes, I'm not tall enough to <laughs> see all of you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, good morning. Uh, my name is Nyoman. I'm from uh, Universitas Erlangga. Uh, so this uh, morning I would like to share about what we are uh, already done and also still uh, running for our collaboration in uh, research with the many uh, kind of the scheme of association in the world of, uh, under the higher uh, education scheme. So I also would like to uh, thank uh, to distinguished uh, from Indonesian Embassy, Ibu Liz, who uh, also uh, attend this uh, event uh, this morning. Uh, this, uh, I would like to uh, talk about uh, sharing about our intensifying collaboration uh, through consortium-based uh, academic, academic research. So for us, for our universities, the research excellence is not only doing the research like for publication or for uh, anything that belongs to the academic, but also we would like to make the academic is more in the three uh, priority program, education, uh, also research, and community development. So this is uh, the policy of our government in Indonesia. So in this uh, kind of consortium in our university, we have a strategic on the research for the three pillars. The one is basic research. This one is a, a, a priority is a, to increase the international publication and also enlarging uh, research impact to the society and uh, also to seek uh, for global funding or research uh, grant. So the second uh, pillar is applied uh, research and the third one is innovation. For the applied research, uh, we uh, need also to increase the international publication. It's mostly also with the joint publication and collaboration with uh, overseas expertise from uh, 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 overseas university and our partner, and also international acknowledgement uh, for the uh, idea uh, and also the uh, internationally patent. For the innovation, of course, we will increasing the in industrial uh, linkage uh, among the academician, government, and also we call it triple helix uh, in our university. So uh, why we do in the consortium? So we are. Uh, always do our research not in individually or just only supervising the student, but we are also do for the consortium with uh, any expertise uh, overseas, but also in domestic uh, in uh, Indonesia, uh, with uh, many of uh, industry and also university, and involving the important thing, the students. So we involve the student to do the research and also to do it for the community development. So this one is, uh, we would like to uh, make the rules of the consortium is enabling the research time mapping and also expanding the network and enrich idea development, strengthening our institutional <coughs> capacity and of course uh, enlarging the impact and uh, the important thing also research funding potential and supporting our government uh, program on solving the local problem. That is a... Uh, uh, the consortium that we uh, develop in our university, uh, in uh, Universitas Erlangga. So Universitas Erlangga is a part of the East uh, Java University in Indonesia. Uh, so we are public uh, university, but we already autonomous university. So we have 11 autonomous university in Indonesia, and uh, part of them uh, is uh, our university. 
So we hope that the impact of our research uh, strengthened through the consortium that we are uh, now uh, would like to share uh, with all of uh, delegation uh, here in this room. Uh, of course, this is uh, will be uh, to the government, to the university, to the community impact, and also developing, uh, developing the further research and also linked with the industry. So we would like to apply more implemented in the uh, industrial uh, impact. So the government, of course, strengthening the policy, solving the local problems. So why we then uh, link with the community development, community services, and also uh, community outreach program for the student, for the researcher, for the lecturer, or also for the society. And then, uh, the university then can also uh, make uh, innovation. So what is uh, the society need from us for the evident research or uh, also for the research-based learning? So we also in, uh, improve our research-based learning for the student and also evident-based learning. So then uh, why then our university have supporting institution in our university? Uh, uh, actually for uh, implementing our uh, research and also uh, community development. We have Institute for Research and Innovation. We have Institute for Community Services for Integrated Training and Development. We have also hospital, uh, uh, university teaching hospital, dental hospital. We have also animal hospital and especially we are in tropical country. We have a research center of excellent in tropical disease uh, institute research and also infection disease hospital. So we have also center uh, for the stem cell uh, development and also institute for business development and incubation. This is uh, the link uh, to the industry. And uh, for this uh, one of the important thing that uh, we, are, uh, we uh, uh, contribute our uh, research in the social in the life science and also health science. But we are very strong in the health science. So why our university, I think this is only the one university in Indonesia having floating hospital. Uh, that uh, uh, going around of Indonesia, especially on rural and also remote area, to help the, the society, uh, especially for the health problem of them. And also we have evidence or research based uh, on the location of the, uh, where the, our floating hospital is uh, going there. So uh, this floating hospital is the, I think only the one uh, that also helped that F, uh, happening for the earthquake in uh, our in Indonesian uh, area. So for this uh, floating hospital we can do uh, sampling for the research for the health and also uh, making uh, any uh, uh, implementation of the medical uh, action for the patient. So uh, we have a global strategic uh, partnership in 26 uh, countries and also around 176 partners from 99 uh, university and also we are very active uh, as um, uh, involved in the association of international members and uh, not only as the member but we are also active as uh, one of the member for joint research with uh, among of this association. Like we have uh, uh, research collaboration uh, with the Satu President Forum with the Taiwan, the President Forum from uh, Southeast Asia and the Taiwan University. We have also scheme of joint research with that and also with the Asia Uninet, uh, with the Asian European Academic uh, University Network. We, have, uh, we also have a, a mobility program with that. And uh, the Asia, uh, the Indonesia, uh, Australia Indonesian uh, Center, we have also joined research collaboration and I would like to share about what we've done with the Australia and also Western Australia government with the sister province of our East Java University Consortium where our university is located there. And uh, we have also USIP program, a US and Indonesia partnership program. Uh, this is actually for the student uh, mobility and also doing the community uh, development and services with the among of the society and the student. And we have also the Erasmus Plus program and Giamonet program. And uh, we are part of the East 
part of Indonesia University Network. So uh, by using this association, we collaborate uh, making the consortium on research and also community development. So then our university is uh, really very pay attention of this uh, kind of the community uh, empowerment and community development. So why uh, our university, our president just uh, initiate and just also launch the kickoff of association of the World University Association uh, for Community Development in uh, our university. At that time, for the kick of the first uh, meeting of this association uh, by Universitas Elanga, so attending at that, uh, even the members, uh, the new uh, association and new member from the USA, from the European also university, uh, from Turkey and Germany, from Australia, uh, and also from Asia, from Bangladesh, Japan, Cambodia, <coughs> Malaysia, Taiwan, and Thailand. So uh, in this program, we would like to make a community development in uh, the member country, especially for the flip, developing uh, country, like with the Asian country, and uh, the Asia, and also I hope with the India uh, in this moment. So we are also inviting uh, all of the dele delegates who attend of this meeting to uh, join with us of the WUACD uh, program in uh, Universitas Erlanga. So next uh, uh, April, we would like to uh, have a open the summit program in two, uh, 2019, uh, and then uh, we are very welcome to invite all of you. So in this uh, uh, very uh, nice uh, day, I would like to uh, share uh, our one of our uh, joint uh, research uh, consortium with Indonesia and uh, Australia in the scheme of EIC. So uh, the consortium is uh, between Indonesia and Australia and uh, our university is the one of part of this uh, project and uh, we done with the project of the energy, urban, urban water, infrastructure, food, agriculture and the health. So the important thing that's uh, this is uh, the priority program. And uh, the two universities are joined, like uh, Universitas Erlangga from Indonesia with Universitas Indonesia uh, in Jakarta with the um, university in uh, Australia. So uh, the, the theme of this pro uh, project it is the uh, formula built uh, in the relation to uh, mothers and preference on artificial feeding and also the region area is the rural uh, area in uh, Indonesia uh, and uh, the Australia also come to join with uh, us. And we hope that uh, this uh, research uh, will be also um, uh, contribute in our university roadmap uh, program uh, in research and community development, especially for herbal medicine, tropical disease, stem cell, and also uh, public health, food sustainability, and nutrition. So this uh, scheme of the consortium with the, our uh, partner university uh, in Australia or any other uh, countries, yes, we have uh, the challenges of the uh, the demand of, of complexity of the local problem. So we, this is uh, our challenge is uh, for to, to have a partner from overseas that uh, we have in Indonesia, many kind of interesting, attractive uh, about the research, especially on the health, on the health uh, program. So we are also commitment how to share uh, the responsibility among the consortium, the institution, and also the mobility of the expertise and also how about the patent recognition among us and also our cross-border law or regulation, especially for the material transfer agreement or MTA uh, to, doing, to doing like a virus, vaccine, and anything about that. So, yes, okay, yeah. Uh, the time is two minutes. I, I hope that I can finish it. Uh, on the time. So uh, this is the, uh, the uh, example of uh, our topic, our program with the Australian Indonesian uh, Center. Uh, this one is the, like uh, about the uh, cigarette, tobacco, the uh, impact of formula milk and also the effect of acculturation on Australia Indonesian uh, perception. We collaborate with Mones uh, and also Sydney University, Queensland and Griffith University. 
So uh, the important that we have done also is intervention, uh, primary intervention to maternal and neonatal uh, mortality because Indonesia is very big population, I think youth population in the world. So we have also young uh, women uh, already get married in the uh, very uh, young age. So they have mentality problem of their uh, kind of this uh, has a maternal. So this is also one of the, our program. So uh, the other scheme is, uh, I just uh, left, skip this one. Uh, the other scheme is uh, very important is uh, best practices of our uh, collaboration, especially in our location in East Java. So we have consortium uh, collaboration, uh, sister province among East Java government with the uh, Western Australia government. Uh, we have 10 university on the, of the East uh, Java Consortium. We have 10 public university and the five university in the uh, Western Australia uh, government. So we are then making a link and match among the priority program from the Western Australia side and then our priority program for our East Java province side. So we have three main priority program and the university of all of the party will be supported uh, the province. And then one of this uh, kind of the uh, program is the capacity building uh, with the student exit program because, because it will be young generation in the future. So we also have uh, 10 uh, collaboration in academic action. Uh, action. We have now uh, accepted, uh, approved to the new Colombo plan and also improving our vocational study development in our province. And also we have uh, like scholarship for the nine uh, human resources in our university have the scholarship from the Western Australia to study PhD program to the Australia and also matching from uh, matching fund from our university and also our government. So uh, this kind of the kind of the our program in the uh, slide you can see uh, especially we develop the inclusive. Uh, inclusive education in East Java. So the East Java government has already decreed that its, dis uh, its district must have the center of inclusive uh, education. This is uh, also a consortium with Western Australia uh, government. So why we can do for our uh, consortium with uh, many kind of our partner in the overseas? This is the important thing is the, our commitment community and related stakeholder participation and also symmetrical relationship agreement to focus on implementation of our research. So I think this is uh, for our sharing to all of you. I hope that this can be uh, more uh, fruitful uh, collaboration and discussion among us. Thank you very much uh, for this uh, event. Thank you. Thank you so much, Professor Ni, nee, for sharing all the amazing work you're doing. May I now invite Dr. Jacqueline Milner, who is Associate Professor and Deputy Head of Partnerships and Connectivity at Lutzrow University, Australia. I want to just begin by thanking Professor Kuma for his invitation to present at this conference and thanking Rahul for all the organization behind the scenes that has brought me safely here. Uh, the theme that I was responding to uh, was academic industry interface for research. Um, my new position, uh, I've only been in there a few months, is um, Deputy Head of School for the H School of Humanities and Social Sciences at La Trobe University in the position that has responsibility for partnerships and connectivity, and it is a new position, um, as the university, I guess, attempts to uh, address how to be more proactive in the partnership space. And upon taking this position, I guess what I first encountered um, was really, is gonna be the topic of today's session, which is the challenges actually, particularly in humanities and social sciences of securing industry support and industry partnerships. So in a sense, it's a bit of a cri de coeur to, um, to my, my colleagues about how we might possibly address some of the issues. So let me begin by um, uh, 
um, laying out some of the context for this, then identifying some of the key challenges that I've encountered so far in this position, and then tell you a little bit about some of the current approaches that we have as far as industry, academic partnerships, and co-funded research in our school, and uh, some of the approaches that we're thinking about implementing. So I'm glad to hear that there have been lots of references already to Australia, amongst many, uh, both in our plenary session and with the previous speaker, which you know, gives you an indication, I guess, that Australia has been quite proactive in the, kind of, in the global links uh, stakes, and it reflects it's a, it's a very truly multicultural society. I myself is actually first generation, born in Chile, but my parents migrated to Australia when I was a child. So there is this, um, there has been quite a, an imperative, I guess, in Australia to have that global outlook. But um, as um, has already been mentioned, um, the, the context of the funding um, landscape, I guess, in Australia is particularly challenging at the moment, has grown increasingly challenging in the last decade or so, and particularly so for the humanities and social sciences. So I'd like to begin in, in contextualising um, my address today by looking very briefly at the research funding landscape in Australia, then telling you a little bit about the La Trobe University uh, research strategy, uh, strategy uh, very recently announced, and some of the specialisations of our school, just to give you a bit of an idea of the kind of disciplines that we represent. So um, something that uh, Lacknath already mentioned around the this, this shrinking uh, government, federal government support, through, particularly through its formal uh, research funding, um, which is the Australian Research Council. And this has affected both pure research and applied research. Um, there's also been an increasing emphasis on scientific priorities, and Lacknath mentioned this, this uh, idea of the national research priorities. Uh, and successful government grants uh, have increasingly gone to those to fund those scientific priorities identified um, in uh, national priorities. There's been a tightening of national benefit as well for uh, <coughs> successful federal funding. Um, you may be familiar with uh, a, a kind of recent uh, scandal, I guess, in Australian academia that was revealed last year when it was. Um, it was finally made public that the Minister for Education had actually vetoed a number of research applications that had been successfully supported through the uh, peer funding mechanism of the Australia Research Council. And all the ones that were vetoed, there were 11 of them, were humanities and social science research projects. And the veto, um, we understood through the way it's been reported through uh, parliamentary inquiries and through the press, that were really the, the minister took issue with um, some of the titles, didn't actually even read the, the, uh, the actual research proposal. These had been, um, as I said, gone through a very rigorous process of, of peer review, had been a, a proof of funding, and then the minister saw, oh, you know, who wants to know, who, who of our electorate um, members, who of our voters are really want, want to know about uh, oriental histories in the Straits of Gibraltar veto. So this is the kind of environment that we find ourselves in Australia at the moment. Um, there's also been recently a change in the, in the funding formula which demotes the contribution that publications make. So it's now almost exclusively how you, uh, the, the government funds universities based on the money that they bring in and the completions of their high research students. A much um, more um, aggressive emphasis on research and engagement. Um, and also constant rhetoric around the need to diversify funding resources, uh, funding sources, and particularly through securing industry partners. Um, in that is reflected, of course, in the universities, La Trobe University's university-wide priorities, uh, in its most recent um, research strategy. Um, you know, uh, the, the university aims to be the partner of choice. So, in other words, this idea that we need to create and grow strong research partnerships with industry, including the service industries, the non-government sector, and the not-for-profit sector, are kind of the, the uh, very front of mind and, and very um, uh, being pursued in a very uh, focused way. So. And the university research priorities, as identified in that plan, um, are very uh, in line with some of those scientific priorities that I mentioned earlier that are part of the, uh, the federal government's uh, research priorities. Two of the largest industry partners that the university has, uh, with the Telco Optus and with the National Dance Company, 
the Australian Ballet. They prioritise health and wellbeing, in particular physiotherapy and sports science for the Australian Ballet, and data science and cyber security for Optus. So this is part of what is a very challenging environment then for humanities and social sciences. This is part of our very recent um, uh, mission statement for our school. Um, and I just wanted to draw your attention there to, I guess, some of the wording that, uh, that we put in there around advancing and defending the value, significance, and utility of the humanities, social sciences, and the arts. That La Trobe uh, Humanities and Social Sciences prides itself in untraditional approaches and a commitment to social justice. So you can see perhaps here the kind of the, I guess, the lack of match between some of the university-wide priorities, the federal government's priorities, and um, the resources that are available to us in humanities and social sciences, and therefore the need to be very innovative in how we might go approaching uh, partnership seeking. And just to give you an, an idea of what the, the disciplines that are represented by our school, these are the names of the departments. So they cover archaeology, history, languages and linguistics, social inquiry, the creative arts, philosophy, politics and communication. So very wide, broad. It's a, it's a very large school. It's nearly 200 academics. So that's the context we find ourselves in. So to summarise some of our key challenges then, we face a hostile federal funding environment that's undermined confidence in the value of humanities and social science research. Um, the track record of industry partnerships is dominated by health, science and engineering research fields. There are few models in the humanities and social sciences at both university level and more broadly. Uh, our staff in general are inexperienced in understanding or brokering industry partnerships given the traditional reliance on government funding for arts and humanities research. And there's a lingering resistance also to applied research, as it's often seen to instrumentalise um, the, the pure research of humanities and social sciences. At the same time, there's really a lack of understanding in industry, and in particular the private sector, of the value that humanities and social science research can actually be in meeting business objectives, in addressing cultural issues, for example, in the workplace. And in, in, uh, another very kind of cause celebre, I guess, last year in Australia was the Banking Royal Commission, which actually looked at the, at the conduct of our major banking institutions and found that there was a, a really toxic culture, um, a very unethical culture within those institutions. So again, very good evidence of the need, actually, for uh, humanities and social science research in professional and, and industry contexts. So some of the, I just wanted to run you through a number of the models, I guess, that we currently have as far as academic industry partnerships. And these are some of the models that we have currently and that potentially we're going to be developing more of. So there's consultancy, there's industry PhD scholarships, there's partnering with not-for-profit organisations in projects that then we collaborate for going to government funding for. There's linkage grants I mentioned, so these are the, the, the Australian Research Council grants that actually are awarded to universities that come in with industry partners. There's professional development workshops, internships and mentorships, and interdisciplinary um, collaborations to apply for government funding. So I'm going to give you just a little bit of a taste of some of these um, in the way that they operate in our School of Humanities and Social Sciences. Two consultancies that have been very successful. One is the Institute for Human Security and Social Change, and the other one is La Trobe Palio. So La Trobe has a, a, a very um, esteemed international reputation in archaeological research. Um, the Institute for Human Security and Social Change actually um, does research, applied research, on equity and social justice issues. And they do a lot of work for um, our Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade, which is the government agency, of course, that has carriage for developing aid policy, and uh, a number of other international partners, including the um, development agency in the UK and various uh, other aid agencies and the Central Land Council, which is responsible for indigenous land claims. Um, La Trobe Palio is basically a series of very specialised laboratories that do work for industry or range of industry bodies in very specialised uh, archaeological knowledges. Um, one of the, uh, the partners there, the Australian Cultural Heritage Management. So again, you're getting a feel for uh, our industry partners actually almost, uh, not all, but they tend to be dominated by government agencies, in fact, rather than the private sector. 
Industry PhD scholarships are another model that we use. Um, very recently, we've, uh, we've uh, negotiated a number of them with another government agency, uh, Aboriginal Victoria. And we found this actually very successful. So the industry partner uh, um, actually uh, funds part of the university scholarship for a PhD candidate. But there's a number of very interesting kind of side effects that come from that in terms, for example, of the, of the, the uh, PhD candidates actually contributing to insights and workplace change uh, by the very questions that they ask uh, within those positions. Partnering with not-for-profits to apply for government funding, this is an, an area that we've been exploring more um, uh, with more focus in recent times. One example that I wanted to give you is um, a not-for-profit provider of independent living and assisted uh, living in, in aged care in Victoria. And La Trobe is partnering there to actually explore the role of virtual reality, how it might play a role in the well-being of older Australians. And again, the distinctive part of it here is not the VR technology that, of course, is not necessarily something that we specialise in, but rather the, the insight that uh, human... Uh, sorry, that humanities and social sciences can bring to something like this, which is actually looking at the way that that technology uh, can, can bring to um, enhanced interactions to all participants, including families, carers and staff, and not just people suffering from de dementia. Linkage grants are still part of our, um, are still part of our um, uh, industry partnership strategy. Um, a couple of examples of recent ones to give you, and again, an idea of the sort of partners that we, that we um, secure. One is uh, New Beats, which was specifically around the impact of um, the disruption to uh, journalism as a profession as a result of digital innovation. And there are partners including the, the National Broadcaster, the, the union that represents journalists and the National Library. And more recently, Living with Environmental Change, Place, Memory and History, which explores through oral history and photography how Australians understand and experience environmental change. So again, particularly with the second one, you see the, the impulse, I guess, for humanity and social science research to, to skew its, uh, its focus into um, national priorities, so environmental uh, degradation and sustainability are national research priorities. So some conclusions. The realities we face. Where our school has successfully engaged industry partner, the organisation are predominantly government and not the private sector. So in a sense, you're not going to the government for formal uh, Australian Research Council funding, but you're going through the government through another route. But nonetheless, you're not necessarily accessing additional funds. The sums for the most part are quite small by comparison as well that we've been able to garner through those industry supports. Um, and there's sometimes a perceived tension between research as defined in, in an academic context, which is the contribution of new knowledge to the field, and the type of research that consultancies uh, with the ones that generate income, uh, which tend to be more evaluative and not necessarily like the blue sky, pure research. And there is also pressure to enter research collaborations in fields which are prioritised in federal, in federal funding and university support, uh, such as health and well-being and environmental science, which, according to some humanities scholars, compromises the integrity of their research. So th there is definitely work to do there in changing that mindset and how those collaborations might actually take place. So the key challenges that I have surmised in my short time in this position, how do we change the culture amongst our staff to embed industry in their research? How do we change industry perspectives on the value of humanities, arts and social science research? How can we ensure the integrity of humanities and social science research in interdisciplinary partner-funded projects in science and engineering? Some of the things that we're, we're continuing to investigate, but uh, I'm hoping certainly that some of the conversations that I had this at this conference with the experience that uh, you may have had in your uh, particular fields will give, you, give me some new ideas and, and thoughts to uh, capitalise on. Industry scholarship partnerships is something that I think uh, we are going to pursue more. We're also training our staff through workshops and partner identification, brokering and development. We're more pointedly promoting our existing successful partnerships to potential collaborators as models for future projects. 
We're breaking more industry placements for our students as a means of nurturing future partnership opportunities. And we've also formed an interdisciplinary working group um, tasked with exploring how humanities and social sciences uh, can contribute to major industry funded projects in health, science and engineering fields. But it is very much an open question and the challenges are very real. So, thank you. Many thanks, Professor uh, Milner, for those very enlightening remarks. Our next presentation is by two speakers. Professor To Chun Tan, who is Head Research Management Department at, at the National Economics University, Vietnam. Accompanied by Professor Wu Hung Fong, who is Lecturer at the National Economics University, Vietnam. Okay, um, to set the time for the conference, so we uh, together join the presentation. So first of all, I would like to say thank to the um, uh, Jindon Global University and the organizer for inviting us to come here to present uh, and uh, share our views about industry academy interface for research and innovation. So uh, for our presentation, first I would like to say a little bit about our university and uh, some problems in the collaboration between the university and industry and firms. And then uh, uh, Professor Vu Hong Feng will present one case study in the Binan uh, to support our presentation. Right, so first, um, uh, for a brief uh, uh, introduction of our university, our university is located in, in Hanoi, uh, the capital in, in Vietnam. And this is one of the uh, leading university in uh, economics, management, and business. Uh, as there are some uh, statistics in our university. Uh, your university have over uh, 1,200 staff members in which there are 50, uh, 150 professors and uh, associate professors. And we have uh, 219 PhDs, uh, um, uh, teachers and lecturers. And uh, now we have 45,000 students in uh, bachelor's, master's and doctoral levels. And we have 19 faculties, assisting schools, institutes and centers. And uh, we have uh, 31 uh, undergraduate majors uh, 15 master majors and 14 doctorate majors uh, in Vietnamese and uh, some uh, degrees in English as well. Um, uh, also, we have uh, hundreds of national uh, levels, military level uh, research projects. And uh, now uh, we, National Economic University, is now chairing a network of more than 40 universities in Vietnam in economics and business administration. So uh, for, for our mission and vision, uh, this is uh, our mission to be achieved. This is a one of the largest and a top quality uh, economics and business uh, educational institutions uh, in Vietnam and a prestigious center for economic research a center for consulting and transforming a transfer of technology of economics, economics and business management. Uh, this is uh, some uh, of our faculties. Uh, you can see this, uh, this uh, variety of faculties uh, uh, in economics, uh, business, and uh, administration. And we have uh, about uh, six uh, schools and some other institutes and uh, about uh, six centers for uh, different uh, disciplines. Okay, um, now what about the research activities? Uh, we provide a high quality consulting service to enterprises and host many national and international conferences in economics and business and administration and uh, leading in economic development, uh, prevailing in macroeconomic policy studies in consultancy. In fact, uh, in our university, we have uh, more than 20 national level uh, projects uh, ordered by uh, different governmental uh, bodies. 
And uh, actually, we have very effective um, translations of the research outcome to the policy, into the policy. Um, our president, uh, this is our president, is a members of the um, uh, prime minister academic advisory uh, groups, and the vice president is a members of national assembly. So, from the uh, project's outcome, uh, this could be translated to the policy uh, application to the different uh, governmental bodies. But the problem is our university is a collaboration between the university and the firms and industry. Because there are some problems. The first one is the gaps between uh, the university and uh, industry. Actually, we have some uh, problems. The first one is a professor are not good at understanding the need of the industry and the firm. These are one problems. And uh, actually, the research products could be uh, good techni uh, technically, but not really good economically. But actually, the firms can know which products are good for them. And, uh, and the gap is they don't have enough uh, research capacity. And the, another problem is uh, firms uh, usually ask for uh, a large and unclear problems or research uh, questions. Uh, but, and also firms are not very confident uh, about the progress and the commitment of the researchers. And also firms ask for, normally ask for short lasting research, uh, detailed and realistic uh, products. But in fact, uh, the researcher in uh, universities uh, normally give priorities to publication and then uh, they can get difficulties in fulfilling uh, the time and uh, the constraints. And so the problem is the likes of mechanism. Uh, actually, the universities uh, are not very active in supporting the information and the fund for our researchers. In, uh, in our university, Normally, the researchers normally assess the firms, assess industry for themselves. Uh, next one is lack of mechanism to transform the products from the university to the firms. And uh, the regulation, investments of the government are uh, fragmented and not market leading. And for a market, uh, this is a lack of market for research products. Uh, some, uh, some issue that I can raise. Uh, first, the products and all formation for a product, uh, especially the, about uh, the capacity, about uh, the uh, time, about the quality of the products, is not very transparent. And also, there are some problems in pricing mechanism and transformation. Uh, the price or the funds is mostly based on the agreement between the firms and the university is not uh, uh, quite clear and transparent. And also, uh, the, most prop the most difficulties in, uh, in the market for research products is uh, problems of copyright in, in Vietnam. And uh, actually, the lecturers are not very uh, well, uh, fully uh, aware of the copyright. And also, the law of copyright in our country is not, uh, it is in major. So there are some solutions. Uh, first one, of course, improve the research capacity, and then there are more. Uh, should be uh, there should be more um, seminar, conferences, and dialogues between the university and the firms for better understanding uh, the needs of industry and firms. And uh, the university can choose the top priorities in in research. And uh, it should be an improvement in copyright. And uh, the lecturers, uh, universities should support firms in all process, from uh, the research uh, experiments, research outcome, until to the market. So this is the first part of our presentation, and now we move to the next one, the case of Vina Komin, uh, presented by Professor Wolf. Thank you, Professor Tang, about the, uh, the view from the university to the, do the research. Uh, my, uh, my view is from the uh, industry. 
where I uh, work for them uh, six years. So the need of the doing research in the firm and industry is very high. Uh, why not? I can show that. Uh, in the in case uh, in the, the case study of Vina Kumi, uh, is the, the uh, state owned company is the one of the biggest uh, group in Vietnam. They uh, uh, focus in the mining industry. Uh, and you see, they have the 1,100 uh, employees, but the turnover only is $5 billion. They have the, the very complicated uh, structure uh, like this. And, uh, the main uh, business, perhaps, uh, uh, coal, mine, coal mining, mineral industry, uh, power industry, and uh, some other activity. So as I mentioned about the, the, the figure of Vinacomin in the, the output of coal is the main their products. Um, in uh, um, uh, last year, only the 70, uh, 37 million tons of coal, and uh, um, uh, some uh, export only 1.8 million tons of coal. But we also imported the, the coal from the Indonesia, from Australia. We have the underground mining and also open pit um, uh, coal. We have the, some the both side and aluminum industry is the center highland of Vietnam. It's a power uh, plant. So as I have the, some difficult, that is the land lost the employee like you see in the picture. Uh, they have the, some uh, current uh, the, the, uh, issue, the difficult issue, is the high cost of production, uh, increasing investment unit cost, and uh, also export uh, dependent profits, in demand, uh, uh, demand from the uh, market demand, uh, and also the poor productivity. So, uh, uh, how to, to resolve it? They have to restructure uh, themselves. And also, the, uh, some uh, solutions, they have made this, but the still uh, difficult, especially in the uh, industrial revolution uh, 4.1 now. Uh, for the, uh, uh, they have the um, uh, low quality skin labor and lack of human resource of high quality. Uh, also, some uh, problem with the, the outdated technology. And uh, afraid of the dumping technology from the uh, uh, outside. And um, um, in Vietnam, we have the, the strategy for the uh, coal industry uh, in the industry for Poirier. Here's uh, Mr. Prime Minister Nguyen Xuân Phúc, also the former student of the, our university, National Economic University. Uh, he uh, has uh, some uh, degree to uh, focus in the uh, uh, Induction for point zero. So as you see in, in the case of Inakumi, uh, they have the, uh, some um, uh, institution in his uh, in his company and also the, some university from outside. So they can reason. They hope that they can reason their, their problem. So now they uh, have to focus 
in the uh, induction revolution, some AI, IoT, uh, some um, uh, clouding. So in the in conclusion that the research not only from the university but also from the industry, from firm. So how do we do, uh, help them to uh, resolve their problem in the industry? Is uh, my the conclusion that uh, to finish the, our presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much to our wonderful colleagues from National Economics University, Vietnam. Um, I now invite Professor Faris Hawari, who is Dean at the College of Natural and Health Sciences, Zayed University, United Arab Emirates. Good morning. No, I don't have a presentation, actually. First, I, would, I have a challenge of my own, which is how to decode my handwriting. <laughs> it's, it's scattered all over the place. Now, my question is actually, what is the real currency of uh, funding research? What do you guys think? The real currency of funding research. What is it? People. What else? Money. Time. So actually it depends. It depends from which lens or which perspective you are looking at it. Um, if you are a scientist, okay, or intellectual or a student, probably money would be the most important thing. If you are an institution, uh, well, money and also recruiting and retaining talented faculty members, researchers, and uh, students. And if you are a government, it's actually, yeah, to find the proper uh, uh, pool of fund and to, re to reallocate fund in order to serve your national agenda or STI agenda or the socioeconomic agenda. STI is science, technology, and innovation. But uh, for researcher, actually, and I see a lot of students here, uh, the main thing, actually, the main sources of fund, uh, funding ideas uh, are foundations and uh, uh, philanthropist organization, and there are thousands of those uh, available uh, uh, throughout the world. And uh, also private sector, private sector uh, either as a part of their social corporate responsibility, or sometimes they really look for a solution for some problems or improve a process or improve the quality, and this will create uh, a match and uh, you know, a funding opportunity. Uh, the third would be to uh, actually join or develop uh, an non-profit to support uh, uh, your research. And this is actually you know, what we call it uh, you know, entrepreneurship uh, and uh, later will uh, result on hopefully spin-off uh, uh, companies. Now, if your research is very well aligned, again, with the government agency, the government authorities would be a good uh, uh, source of fund. Collaboration and the professional networking is, is also another source of uh, uh, funding. But what if the five options failed, and they often do? Uh, well, what we need to do at that time is to uh, better communicate uh, our idea and make science uh, work and uh, uh, you know, change the, the themes, reorient uh, our ideas. And uh, uh, you know, some, um, an example actually just popped in my head, which is when uh, um, environmental scientists, they were talking about uh, uh, you know, uh, air pollution and uh, dust storms, and they looked at it as uh, you know, purely physical engineering problems. But when they link it with mortality, uh, when they linked it with healthy problem, you know, uh, the, uh, ch the picture changed and there was a paradigm shift when, uh, you know, when we're talking about air pollution and atmospheric uh, problems. Also, reallocating the uh, sources uh, of fund. 
I'm happy to see some uh, people from uh, the uh, Arabian Gulf. And uh, we know there, the you know, water problem was an important issue and food security was an important issue. And uh, in the past, uh, uh, you know, policies uh, focused on uh, uh, supporting agriculture and subsidizing agriculture, but actually that did not lead anywhere, uh, you know, to, to a good solutions. So what happened is that they, they allocated uh, fund and reinvested uh, uh, money in sustainable water production, uh, awareness campaigns, and things uh, changed. Now, the, my take on the uh, interface between the research and, uh, uh, not actually, the academia and uh, research, it depends. It depends actually uh, who you are as a university. Research university, um, teaching university, entrepreneurship university, or a comprehensive university. This actually will determine the shape of the relation between industry and uh, academia, whether it will manifest itself as a training program uh, or it will manifest itself as uh, an initiative, like what we see here, this university, or actually as, uh, uh, you know, solutions. But, you know, my colleagues before me, he highlighted the very important problems. There are gaps. These gaps are communications, different expectations, uh, you know, how we look at time frames, uh, you know, immediate uh, return uh, on investment versus the strategic and type uh, and the strategic and patient type of investment. Also, the IP issues, the copyright issues. All of these are, uh, you know, important challenges that, uh, uh, you know, yeah, sometimes complicate the uh, scene between industry and academia. Um, I will close by actually saying that the interface between industry and academia is win-win. Uh, there is no doubt that the uh, company will improve the processes, quality, and uh, uh, you know uh, will increase the competitiveness of the companies. And actually, university will gain money, fund, IPs, patent, uh, ranking, uh, research, and uh, communication. Uh, just a little bit about my university. I came from uh, Zaid University. Uh, Zaid University is uh, 20 years old. Uh, it makes it to the, uh, you know, uh, ranking. And uh, we have uh, three types of uh, funding mechanisms. The seed fund and the REF, the research incentive fund and the cluster, which uh, actually fund collaborations with the other institutions and interdisciplinary research. Thank you very much. Thank you for your remarks, Dean Hori. Once again, for the next presentation, we're joined by two speakers. Professor Jamaluddin Jami, who is Deputy Director and Head of the Department of Career and Professional Development Services at the Southeastern University, Bangladesh. Who is joined by um, Professor Sumit Gupta, who is from UPES, India. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Jamaluddin Jami. Deputy. Good, good afternoon, I'm Professor Sumit Gupta. Okay, first of all, I'd like to uh, thank OP Jindal Global University for uh, organizing such a wonderful event. Uh, here. So today we will be talking about uh, more so industry academia interface for research and innovation. A uh, few years back I was reading an article from Business Insider and Business Insider was taking an interview of a famous CEO of a Wall Street based bank and she was asked a question that based on what you recruit your new employees and how you promote your old employees based on what? And she answered uh, with the two words answer like uh, paper skill. The thing, what I do for my office at my university, based I work with industry. So before we send our graduates to the industry, we need to groom up uh, them like uh, uh, with the basic grooming so that they're well skilled and competent to do jobs in the industry because industry require ready-made employees. So in that case, we struggle. Why we struggle? Well, I will present a little bit scenario based on research on that. So before that, please, uh, Dr. Gupta, introduce yourself. Yeah, yeah. Yes, please. 
Yeah, uh, this is coming to uh, myself. See, uh, we two are standing is a live example of Industry Academy interface. I have been from India, I have worked in the industry for around 15 years, uh, representing all in that sector. So we thought last night, why don't we see a live example of Industry Academy interface. So we are getting both viewpoint from Bangladesh viewpoint and Indian viewpoint. Uh, as far as me is concerned, uh, the coming to uh, Industry Academy interface comes to a long back. This is a live example. Uh, way back I was traveling from Delhi airport to Australia and I find that the ground handling company called as Salivy. I hope you are aware of that. And I find that company's guys, I say that, how are you handling the baggage? When are handling proper baggage, they say that it's very costly affair. I said that, why do you train your employees on cost optimization? They said we don't have a trained workforce. I said that, why don't you ask Indian universities to train their people on the, on the aspect of cost optimization? or business process renewing. It means that somewhere, somewhere gap is there. It means that unless and until we take requirement from industry and come to academia, structured courses, we can't move ahead. So that's the groundwork for me to thought for academia industry interface. Over to you. Okay, before I start my presentation, I'd like to talk about a little bit about my <laughs> university. So Southeast University, uh, it is situated in Dhaka, Bangladesh. Uh, we have 12,000 students, 25,000 plus uh, alumni. So before, uh, this is one of the largest private universities. So there are two types of universities in Bangladesh, public and private. Public universities led, run, and financed by government. So all the administration, so they have autonomy. They have autonomy in terms of uh, taking decisions and other things, but everything run by government. And public university financed by, uh, private university financed by uh, some uh, uh, industrialists, you may say uh, owners. But later on, government changed the total rule that, okay, university should not be a, a place for business. So uh, university should run by a trust. So trust means uh, university trustee, board of trustees. So now the owners of the, of the universities, they cannot claim them, okay, they are the owners of the university, but rather they are the trustee members or board of, board of trustee. So university is run, uh, I mean, financed by, uh, I mean, uh, people, I mean, uh, the businessmen, the owners, but vice chancellor, pro vice chancellor, treasurer, and the systems is run by UGC and ministry. So it's uh, more like people, public, uh, I mean public, private university, they're not only private university. So, but we term it private university. We have three schools, schools of arts and social sciences, school of business administration, school of uh, 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 engineering and technology. So under three schools, we have 11 departments. So within this 11 department, we have 12,000 plus students. It's huge, but uh, you know, in Bangladesh, system or scenario a bit different, like uh, private universities are not allowed to offer PhD programs. Even uh, public universities only can offer PhD programs, but the system, you know, the loopholes are like that, okay, PhD are not offered so easily. So people go outside, people come to India, people go to Malaysia, Australia, all over the world they go for pursuing their higher education, especially PhD. So in that case, uh, the whole journey of private university started in Bangladesh in 1992, but South Asian University started its journey in 2002. So it's not uh, so long, but it's not definitely, we celebrated 15 years, three years back. So that's all about South Asian University. Uh, coming to University of Petroleum and Energy Studies, see as the Norman teacher says, we are catering into energy verticals. See, uh, this is a university which thought primarily a long way back, why don't we work for our energy sector where we always uh, discussing about energy will be in short. It means that we have to work for some renewable energy sources, talking for solar, hydro, nuclear, etc. That's with the vision the university has commenced and now present strength of university is 15,000 on, on campus students and 30,000 plus alumni base. If you talk about research and orientation, majority of research with us is industry aligned. Example, we have a 100 megawatt power project installed in campus. It's a live example how power generated. So in campus, 70% of energy came from solar itself for utilization. Since it's a green university, so we have a green award as a sense of using solar. Now, 
we have put so many project installed including robots including formula 1 cars etc we are presently working on water mill modernization we are working on energy harvesters mini and mini and micro hydro power projects we are working on uh, shale gas reservoirs we are working on cluster development for small scale industries and so on and so forth and most important we are a think tank for prime minister on the area of energy so whatever prime minister thought to do in energy they consult india and japan so they have, they have made consortium of uh, uh, a think tank comprising of india japan to talk about how energy can be saved how energy can be uh, utilized for india as a alternate source as a result university has not developed a technical kind of research center research is purely industry based so we have a center called as robotic research it means we develop reports and right now we are working on reports which will help to clear solar photovoltaic cells you see the solar cells they are cleaned so we have to have a robot to clean that cells similarly we have a center for nanotechnology we are center for alternate energy research and what we have done we have we have appointed industry fellows it means that whenever a uh, industry expert who are fellow with my corporate life that become to academics we said you are open for us and with our west what they have done you have heard about student internship what all the students they said no no we have a concept of faculty internship so every summer every winter we are open to go to industry and learn new concept example a last uh, year itself i have gone to gas com gas companies in the first gas so i have learned how gas actually be transmitted so compressed gas system liquid system all are being learned by me so as a result then we as a professor not our hard work academicians we are a corporate trainers as well so with our is we have a learning from industry they are learn from us so that's when we have a alignment see that's why we have a uh, around done around 80 plus mous with industries to work on industry aligned courses so curriculum is not developed by us we we give these are the subjects every year we change curriculum every year by the industry requirement is said no no this old concept modify do some kind of reasoning we do it otherwise students as sir has already said they are not ready to fit in industry so industry academic gap has to be minimized that's why india is doing a lot of effort specifically to private universities so okay uh, as we are uh, i mean we were sharing the room yes uh, last night so uh, we were sharing something else here because uh, people from Bangladesh, especially from Petro Bangla, they come to his university uh, for getting training. So what we have found, found, found uh, sh something really uh, shocking news few days back, uh, a news uh, published in a daily based uh, uh, newspaper, and it says that Bangladesh became fourth source for remittance earning in 2017. So Bangladesh became fourth source for India, remote, uh, uh, I mean, remittance earning in 2017. I mean, our business is growing so fast, but we lack proper manpower to handle it. I have many friends who are from India, they're working in Bangladesh with top positions. Why this happened, and uh, it, this is the news you can see, it's uh, in a Bangladeshi newspaper, so it was really, uh, huge debate in the uh, last years, in the beginning, and also all over the year, because uh, we are hiring manpower, skilled manpower from other countries to run our business. What happens? But the scenario is totally different uh, in Bangladesh, like uh, a, a study was conducted by British Council and uh, World Bank, and it says that 47% Bangladeshi graduates are unemployed. In terms of getting jobs, 47%, I, I mean, in total, in Bangladesh, we have 39 public universities and 105 private universities. So in a year, near two lakhs graduates are completing their graduations. And one university remains, that is we call national university, throughout the country. So it is a, a producing five lakhs graduates each, each year. So in total, seven lakhs graduates. And out of that, near 50% 
people are not getting jobs. What is the problem? But we are hiring uh, people from India, we are hiring people from Sri Lanka, we are hiring people from uh, Philippines. Uh, lots of Chinese people are working there, they are leading industry, they are leading corporates. So where is the problem? So here, uh, professors from our, uh, one of our institutes, we call it IRD, Institute of Research and Development, and also ICAC, Institute of, uh, Institute, Institutional Quality Assurance Health, they did a research, they found a shocking news that, you know, News is like uh, just uh, I showed here. Uh, yeah, this one. So mainly our syllabus is still backdated. It's not industry oriented. So we are working, we are making collaborations, we are working together with industry, but the main thing is missing that is gap. So we are saying uh, at, uh, we are saying that okay, there is no job. People are unemployed, and industry is saying we are not getting people from your academic industry. Uh, I mean, from academia. That's why we are hiring from outside of the country. So there is a gap. So we need to minimize that gap. So as time is short, please yeah. <laughs> continue. See, as you rightly said, that there is huge gap in the academic industry. See, there are different kind of silos of thinking. So we have to have an industry based here in universities. Can't be thought of industry based here so that they will thought of how curriculum should look like. If students are ready as for industry requirement, they're fit in. They're the ready manpower, they're skilled manpower. With the rest, we have to support industry in the sense of product development, innovation, research and research in designs, product, processes, operations. See, we have to thought together. So why my university does not have a board of studies comprising the list to stop this? Once both of them think as a think tank, I hope the gap will be minimized. So the heavy high time has come, and both have to come a single platform, thought over it and find a solution. Industry is not only for placement and internship. They will protect by default come as an outcome. The, the requirement is interface common platform, set, thought, and do action. So the time has come for action, planning has already been done. So this, I hope we thought that by this planning and action, the gap will be minimized. As a result, we have optimized research for industry, academia, resultant, productivity, economic output, and growth for economy, and growth for world as a whole. Okay, as I work with the industry, so I do have a very good relationship with HR people and also different CEOs of industry. What I found, so there are some students here, I want to say a few words for you people. Okay, what are the required skills? I started my topic that I, 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 I read an article from Business Insider. They so look for people skills. So what is people skill? I will advise you, those who are students here, I will advise you, okay, be involved with extracurricular activ activities outside of your classroom. So be involved with club activities. I have heard that OBG in the Global University has 20 more clubs. So be involved and learn some people skills so that you can lead in an industry after completing your academic life. Thank you very much. Thank you.